it is difficult to combat and to overcome terrorism as long as its havens are outside the country. The problem of terrorism in Afghanistan is so serious and much more complex than before. We have to deal with an enemy which has a transnational composition whose goals are global, worldwide, uh, has support and foreign backing. Counter narcotics in Afghanistan, we never used to grow poppy in Afghanistan. The poppy growing came to Afghanistan politically to our country. And Afghanistan people are fight against this evil. And we are going to get rid of this and improve our security in Afghanistan. Last year in Afghanistan, there was 19% uh, reduced by cultivation, 6% it was reduced by uh, production. About three by four part of Afghanistan is free of poppy. There is extensive influence on trying to solve the Afghanistan problem through military means. Most Afghans will tell you that Afghanistan and the situation in Afghanistan will not be solved through military means. Thus, we have to move on two prongs. We have to have a political strategy and we have to have a military strategy. You need to involve the Afghans on all different levels. You sometimes Afghans feel that this car or this strategy that is going along, Afghans are not part of it. Afghans do feel left out. The insecurity has increased drastically in the, in recently. The implementation of security in the region, in, the, in Afghanistan, cannot be implemented without a comprehensive social, uh, regional, international approach. The strategy for security should be based upon the restoration of the capabilities of the people of Afghanistan to take the reins of affairs into their hands. Uh, in order to establish a secure country, there should be a regional conference under the control and observation of the UN. The crisis in Afghanistan is a re regional crisis and it should be dealt as such. We are victims of fascism, we're victims of fanaticism and we're victims of extremism in Afghanistan. Only the establishment of democracy in Pakistan, the support of democratic forces can lead to a regional security which is also reinforced and the establishment of mutual confidence between the peoples. I think we all know that to resolve the challenges, military and finances are not all. We need to look beyond that. What we need to do is bring the Afghans back and invite them for a dialogue. They need to feel that they're stakeholders in the future of their country. There is very little of the resources spent on development in Afghanistan that is effective in helping common people in the field. The allocation of funding for local projects is not tailored to local people's needs. Common people are feeling that international aid is not supporting them, for example, in supporting and improving infrastructure. A different approach is necessary more money must be channeled to local projects with local people becoming more involved in the running of projects. The conversation in our group was emphatically opposed to the proposition that there be a foreign controlled group or set of new armed militias in Afghanistan, uh, but uh, several speakers spoke against the proposition that, uh, uh, that any sort of peace as might have emerged in Iraq as a result of the arming of local militias could be replicated in Afghanistan uh, through a foreign controlled set of armed uh, militias uh, new on the scene. Seven years ago, after the collapse of the Taliban, a new sovereignty has came to power in Afghanistan. But unfortunately, adoption of wrong policies due to non-real understanding of the realities in Afghanistan and lack of the coordination at the national level has brought this fact that after passing of these years, Afghanistan failed in achievement of its objectives, particularly in increasing security. The war on terror has not yet seen the dawn of victory. The Taliban militia not only control the southern and the south southern parts of Afghanistan, they, but also 
gradually infiltrated into the northern part, the Afghanistan has uh, encountered tremendous difficulties in economic development, uh, rely heavily on the international aid. Foreign investor investment was discouraged by the security problem. Maybe the international community and uh, at meetings like this may consider, provided of course our Afghan friends wish to have India play a larger role, uh, involve, get India involved in some of the points that were made this morning, for instance, in, in terms of training of the Afghan army. We've done it before in better times, uh, in uh, the, the police, uh, in terms of your uh, electoral processes, in terms of uh, the justice mechanisms. There is a great deal that India can do, given the fact that we have a fair understanding of the cultural aspects of, of the country also. To that extent, I think India could play a very significant role. As Arabs, we, are, we feel very close to Afghanistan. We have a common history. We have cultural and economic and political interests in common. I believe that the Arab League is waiting with impatience for progress uh, of the situation. And as a Lebanese or a Palestinian or Iraqi, and how this is all difficult when the state is uh, submitted to occupation and dislocation from abroad. The international community's uh, efforts in Afghanistan at the moment are seen as ineffective. In contrast, the Taliban is seen as being effective. The Afghan government is clearly weak. You also have the element of the drug trade, uh, which is providing support, not only for Taliban, but for all, all the other groups uh, which, are, which are sort of involved in this as well. And this has led to a very interesting and curious uh, dilemma, uh, one of uh, either a fear of dependency uh, and, and the other extreme is the fear of abandonment. <clears throat> there's a security crisis, which we've talked about. Um, there's a crisis of confidence among the Afghan population, and I would also suggest among some of the allies contributing to uh, the effort in Afghanistan. At, at the most extreme end, there is a risk of state collapse and extremist takeover uh, in Pakistan. There's a risk of civil war in Afghanistan if we don't get this right. Now is our opportunity to, uh, to go beyond generalities and to move beyond uh, impassioned speeches and admiring the problem uh, to concrete, specific policy proposals and programs. I believe that what I can say is that I hope it's not only words and that my Afghan colleagues will see progressively actions to follow these words, positive actions which go along the lines that you have correctly and justly claimed. In the group number three, we spoke of national reconciliation and we understood that this is one of the firm requests of our Afghan colleagues. 30 years of convening uh, meetings like this on different problems around the world, I will say this has been one of the most rewarding uh, for me personally. I think we've started a process now that, that uh, Sikman has said, now a number of specific things need to be followed up. Uh, we commit as, as the East West Institute, we will, we will do that, we will work with you. There have been a number of very specific proposals. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of hard work to do, as, as very much David Cullen pointed out this year, could go, could go very, very badly for, for Afghanistan and for the international community, for the neighbors. It could also, it could also be a turning point. Uh